What's up guys, Coach Alney here from Ottawa University. Uh, I'm the eSports head coach here. On TikTok, I posted that I would be doing a video every single day this week to answer all of the questions I get relating to eSports, college eSports, getting a job, all that stuff. So I thought I would start the week out with the most common question, which is just, how does college eSports work? First, I was a little bit confused by this question, but there's just really not that much information about it, so I understand why so many people have this question. So I'm gonna take this opportunity on YouTube to have a long form answer to this question to make sure it's thoroughly explained. So with traditional sports, it's pretty easy, right? Um, you go into high school, you make your varsity team, you do really well, a D1 school picks you up, play there, and if you do really well, you get drafted to a professional team, you make a bunch of money, pretty straightforward, right? It takes a ton of work, but it's a pretty straightforward path on how to become a professional athlete. Um, likewise, if you want to get a job in that sort of field, there's uh, majors for sports management, obviously traditional paths like marketing and business management with uh, emphasis in sports so that you can kind of try to prepare yourself for a career um, around those games. In esports, there's been a lot of gray area on how this all works. In the past, um, you know, it was you had to kind of know someone and you played in a bunch of LAN tournaments to try to get noticed and you do a bunch of online qualifiers and then maybe you'd get picked up by a team that would try to qualify for a professional spot. Very confusing, I know. Um, luckily for everyone that's watching this, especially if you're like 14 to 16, that path is becoming a lot more clear every single year. Um, for the past couple of years, each professional esport has kind of come out with its own path to pro, and that's how I'd like to transition into college esports because what we're seeing now is a build out very similar to traditional esports where you compete in high school uh, through a company like HSEL, which is the High School Esports League. Um, I will be doing a full video on that tomorrow if you have questions on that. But basically you compete with them, you can go on like a recruiting website through their platform. Uh, college recruiters can now find you to come to college to play esports. And we are actually now seeing drafts and kids in college esports being recruited to professional teams. And I imagine that's only going to get more and more significant each and every year. I know what you're thinking. Coach, you still haven't answered our question. I know, I just had to lay the groundwork for why this question is important. And so now that you understand why college esports is a thing and the path that you are going down if you decide to go to college for esports, I will explain how it works. And it's super simple. College esports works exactly the same as going to college for a traditional sport, for the most part. There's some schools that don't classify it as an athletic program, but I'm going to be speaking strictly in terms of schools that classify it as an athletic program, which is the majority. When you get a scholarship to come to college as an esports athlete, you are coming under an athletic scholarship. That means that your scholarship is going to pay for part of your schooling and in return, you are agreeing to compete and train with the team there. So you go to college just like any other kid. You take your classes, you pick your major, uh, you do your four years, five years, however long it takes, and you graduate with a degree. That's all exactly the same. Sorry, I should clarify too. If you get a scholarship for esports, you have to go to the school. You, you cannot do it from home. It is not free money. It is a scholarship. The whole point of the esports program is to get you to come to their college and compete for their team. They want to build a team, they want to compete against other schools, build a name for themselves, you need to go to the college. So they are willing to pay for a percent of your schooling to get you to come and compete for their team, and in return, you get a cheaper degree. You get a discount on your you know, tuition so that you can go to college for cheaper. The, at the end of the day, scholarships for esports and college esports, the goal is to get a degree to prepare you for a future career, okay? Which is great and which is another reason that parents should support this. I'm getting off track. So when a college reaches out and says they wanna give you a scholarship for esports, you have to graduate high school or get your GED in some cases, um, have an ACT or SAT score that qualifies you for that school and be accepted just like any other kid. You have to go to that college and then you are going to be on their team. Now, the structure of teams can vary between schools, but for the most part, you're going to be practicing with the team on average 20 hours a week. So you're going to have sometimes morning and afternoon practices, sometimes two afternoon practices where you'll do a scrim and a VOD review. Um, 
it, it kind of varies on how each coach lays out their schedule, but, uh, but for the most part, you're going to be averaging 20 hours a week training for that program. Now let's get to where you're competing. College Esports has a few different vendors for collegiate esports tournaments. A lot of them are hosted through the actual developer of the game. Biggest names in college esports as far as tournaments go are TESPA, Collegiate Star League, AVGL. So those companies for the most part are going to host the tournaments that you compete in. Now like I said, each major, each major esports title usually has a major esports tournament associated with it. Uh, for Overwatch, it's TESPA's Varsity Series Overwatch Tournament, which then later qualifies you for an ESPN playoff. Um, that's the big one, that's the one you want to go into if you're in Overwatch. For Rocket League, it's College Rocket League. That's the big one that they host that is really going to get your name out there and try to uh, establish yourself as a really good player. Uh, League of Legends is hosted by Riot. They host the big League of Legends tournament every year, and that's how you get noticed by professional teams. On top of that, College esports athletes are also allowed to compete in online tournaments and other various things depending on what your program is going to allow you to do and what they're going to pay for or what you have to pay for for yourself. The cool thing about college esports right now is that you are allowed to make money. You're allowed to have tournament winnings, you're allowed to stream and get donations, you're allowed to have a YouTube channel and make money off of it. Uh, our programs don't touch your personal brand. In fact, in my program and hopefully many others, we encourage you to develop your own brand. We help you develop your own brand because that's really how you're going to make a successful career in esports. So not only do you get to keep all the money, but we're gonna help you try to make the money. So the final question you probably have in your head that I'll answer in this video is, how do I find college esports programs? Um, and the answer is a little bit tricky. The best way is through NACE's website. NACE is the National Association of Collegiate Esports. They are the current uh, governing body for the majority of esports programs in the country. They cover about, I think, like 90% of the programs in the country. It's not a requirement for an esports program to be part of NACE, um, but they offer a variety of benefits, and so most schools opt to be a part of it. On their website, they have a school directory. I'll put screenshots up right now. When you go to their school directory, you can actually search for um, programs that have your game and also programs in a certain radius of you or within a state um, or you can search for specific schools and just see if they have an esports program um, this is a great tool to get started the next best one and it's funny but uh, it's Twitter you search whatever school you're interested in with the word esports it'll usually pop up um, if they have an esports program and you do have to be careful on Twitter because there's a ton of schools that have esports clubs so there's a big distinction between an esports club and a varsity esports program, which is scholarships. Clubs won't have scholarships. It's, it works exactly the same as uh, intramurals or um, anything like that in college. They don't offer scholarships. It might not be a bad opportunity for you, especially if it's a school that um, has a major that you really want to get into and you're not really trying to be a professional esports athlete. You just kind of want to play games and have fun in school. Uh, a club might not be a bad idea, but they're not going to give you a scholarship. So, uh, so be careful on Twitter, but that's going to be the next best. There's not a real definitive list of college esports programs that I'm aware of right now. I know there's a couple people that have reached out to me that are trying to put it together, but it's just tricky. So the best two resources are going to be NACE's website, which is NACE with the E spelling esports.org um, or Twitter. So to summarize in total, a scholarship in esports means you have to be ready to attend their college to go there and work towards a degree and put 20 hours a week in to compete for their team. Now the next question is how do I get noticed by a college? How do I get offers for a scholarship? How do I compete in high school? And that all is tomorrow's video on what is your first step in esports. So I will be posting that video tomorrow so that you guys can tune in and hopefully get all those questions answered. But I wanted to make this one purely about how college esports works uh, and the benefits and things like that. I could talk benefits real quick as well. Every single program that offers scholarships right now is going to have some sort of staff member that supports your program. They're going to have some sort of computer lab or esports arena with computers and equipment for you to play on. You know, not every program is going to have one-on-one, -on -one, meaning one computer setup for every kid in their program, but you're at least going to have access to that stuff uh, to be able to compete and train and, and things like that. But for the most part, it does help to have your own setup. Hopefully that answered all of your questions. I am doing a Q&A at the end of the week. Um, if you want to participate in that, you have to go to my TikTok. You'll see the post where I'm, I'm asking for questions for the Q&A. Um, 
Otherwise, I really hoped that you guys learned something from this. If you have a follow-up question that I didn't answer in here, uh, you can drop a comment below. I'll be checking it all week. Uh, just make sure it's a very specific question. General questions are very hard to answer. Uh, the general questions are supposed to be what I answer in these videos. Um, I will also post in the description the schedule for the rest of the week so you know uh, all the questions I will be answering throughout the week. And I do really appreciate it if you share this with anyone that's interested in esports um, or getting involved in college esports. It really helps out to spread the word and grow this community uh, to show kids that this is a possibility for you just as much as it is uh, to play baseball, basketball, soccer, anything like that. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.